Yeah, what I also remember thinking when I first saw the paintings for Cold Days that there was you know, no way with those colors in the sky because you must have talked about these colors being present in the winter. And uh, of course, the moment I looked out the window, there they were, these very cool roses and cool pinks and silvers were just outside. And of course, the beauty of that exhibition was that there were so many windows mm -hmm. um, that you could look outside and really be aware of this relationship. I think that that was one of the best things about doing the exhibition here in January because I knew that people would have to walk to get here yeah. and that there would almost <laughs> certainly be snow on the ground right. and that they would almost, well, if they came on a sunny day, that they would be snow blind if they yeah. came in the daytime or if they came at the end of yeah. the day that, any, that, that they would almost certainly have an experience of blinding mm -hmm. winter light or some kind of winter light in Chicago. And then being in the gallery would somehow that experience would prepare them for seeing the paintings. Yeah. And, and then after I made the first big wall painting, uh, it was at the MCA when they opened their new building. Oh, I remember. I painted this. Back in the restaurant. Thing. Yeah, in the yeah, cafe yeah. on yeah. those two walls. Right. So I made a pair of paintings, <sighs> Grooving on Lemon and Grooving yeah. on Violet. And they were sister paintings. And so yeah. Grooving on Violet was the optical after image that you right. would see after you looked at the lemon yellow painting right. on white. Right. And that room had uh, east-facing windows and a brilliant I light, oh, yeah. right? And that silver furniture and all this light would bounce around right. in that space, and you would have this immediate after image, yes. which would correspond yeah. to the other painting. Yeah. And those paintings were huge; they were 17 by 35 feet, one inch. Yeah, like the the Tracy Williams show, where you really used wall. Well, that and it's absurd afterwards. Well, right. the difference, yeah, I th right. So there's been a steady progression. I think the the exhibition at Tracy Williams was sig a big jump again because because in that exhibition there was the the kind of progression through the galleries leading up to that room where I painted the entire gallery and then hung paintings on top mm -hmm. of the wall painting. Right. So it was this cumulative experience. Right. That's logical, yeah. Right, and I think that that was important as a kind of build up to, to that whole experience. Um, but I also think that it was like being, like that the, the paintings on top of the wall was like being inside one of the paintings almost. Mm -hmm. And that was really, that was really fantastic, mm -hmm. I think. And also her space is so peculiar, right? Because there's a fireplace in every room. Right. So the, the yeah, domestic right. component really contributed something new to the paintings. Mm -hmm. Because when they're just you know, rectilinear paintings and they don't really respond to any of the eccentricities of the architecture, they, they don't have as much character in a way. Mm -hmm. So I thought that the installation at Tracy's with, you know, the funky door and the fireplace and all of that um, was a much more singular painting mm -hmm. in, you know, in every way. But then in Zurich? Zurich's face was a kind of perfect theatrical right. box, right? right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing that filter was the column, which I right. painted metallic gold yes, right. with that green pattern on top. Right. And that was... You know, the only way to kind of uh, recalibrate the, the energy in that room, mm -hmm. which is... No, I didn't see the one that... Did you? Oh, a Dan Devening? But I saw slides of it, and there, too, the wall, I mean, became... Yeah, that was... really important. Yeah, that was uh, a painting that turned the corner. Yeah. Which was also wonderful, because it was the first time that I realized that if the color was... Uh, active enough that it would eliminate that corner space entirely. Mm -hmm. So that painting was fluorescent orange and the color just kind of canceled out the corner mm -hmm. and it completely flattened out so we would only realize that it was a corner where you, where you saw the floor come together. And that right. was a really amazing discovery. Yeah. So I used that in the painting that I made in Zurich. Uh -huh. 
which had more pattern in it, which maybe ultimately was not necessary. <laughs> um, but the fluorescent orange in that painting really melted the corner, mm -hmm. which I mm -hmm. thought was a really interesting, interesting. Yeah. perceptual experience right. where I stood in that space.